Hello, welcome to Cinema Savvy and welcome back to yet another movie review. The movie reviews are piling up thick and fast this week, as we all know. It's the Academy Awards this Sunday and uh, I am trying to... I don't think I've ever watched this many movies in my lifetime in such a short span of time. It really is absolutely remarkable, but I'm getting through them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm getting through them. It really, really surprises me how quickly I am getting through them, but hopefully I will have a majority of them watched by the night of the Oscars. Speaking of which, before we get to this review, um, I bet you're tired of hearing me say this at this point Naomi <laughs> but um, I have to big this up every single time so we are taking your predictions in for the Academy Awards um, and we're offering you the ability to send those in to us and whoever gets the most right on the night so the people that have sent them in will have a chance to feature on a future episode um, we need your first and second choice for each of the categories of the Academy Awards of who you think is going to win and whoever gets the most right as I said will be on a future episode you can send that into our email at cinemasavvypodcast at gmail.com or you can send it into our Facebook page and a link to our social media links is in the description down below um this movie that we're reviewing today um has only been nominated for one academy award and that's the academy award for best actor for willem dafoe in the role of vincent van gogh and the music and the movie sorry we're going to be talking about is at in sorry at eternity's gate i will be able to speak eventually uh which uh, is the 2018 van biographical Goff. drama film there you go <laughs> van gogh there, there's the puns ladies and gentlemen these are the jokes folks <laughs> um at it's, eternity's it's why gate he brings me here yeah, which is the um, 2018 biographical drama film directed by Julian Schnabel, who I remarked before saying sounds like a Gen 2 Pokemon, uh, starring Willem Dafoe and Oscar Isaac and Mads Mikkelsen. Um, again, like with many movies like this, especially this Oscar season, I really don't have a whole lot to say about it. So this review will be initially brief. Um, I does he goes to school does art you know about vincent van gogh so or vincent van gogh however you pronounce it mm -hmm. and um obviously i do love his art style and he does have this really tragic uh history that i think has the best one that i've seen it weirdly has been in a doctor who episode and i'm not just saying that because i'm in cardiff yep. but damn that last scene where like they bring Van Gogh to the present and he gets to hear how his work is celebrated that that scene just keeps tearing me up damn it no that was a really good episode and um I mean um this is a 2018 movie but it's obviously getting nominated this year's the 2019 Oscars but there actually was a 2017 Vincent Van Gogh I movie called Loving Vincent yeah it was the animated film Loving Vincent it was nominated for best animated feature at that Academy Awards and in all fairness it probably should have won um i'd never i mean quite... go on sorry paintings all paintings like you every really single them. yeah every single i mean who won like, against it, them it seems it seems um i i think it was a I think it was Coco that won against it, which was a very good movie, but it's just like, okay, Disney it's, and it Pixar seems like are winning the Academy all of Awards these. have like it written in blood that every animated feature film has to go to Disney. Or or Pixar, absolutely. But um Well, in, Pixar's part of Disney now. So. Yeah, in terms of you know, pushing the boundaries for animation, loving Vincent absolutely did that. And I know that I think it's called rotoscoping or something like that. I yeah. think that's the, the that's term the technical the term it is where they've um like sketched over the artist. Yeah. They did that for um like old Fleischer cartoons, so like with Betty Boop, they did that yeah. with um using Cap Calloway in some of those cartoons. Mm -hmm. If you ever heard of um when they did uh, Minnie the Moocher or mm -hmm when they uh, write a cartoon of Snow White, that is using uh, rotoscoping of Cab Calloway. Yeah, I was so, going to say- I, like, I know a lot about old cartoons. Yeah, I was going to say, even in terms of Loving Vincent, that style of animation wasn't particularly new. Like the whole rotoscope thing, as you just mentioned, those movies, the original Snow White, which came out in the 30s, um, there was that 70s or was it 80s Lord of the Rings cartoon movie as well. Yeah. Um, that also used a lot of that in there but the fact that each frame of that movie they actually individually painted and it was distributed between so many artists it, it was incredible feat of animation um and was a great telling of the vincent van gogh story and now we have another one at eternity's gate so i'll get the review and another one we'll get the review back on track onto the actual movie that we're talking it, about it'll now. be like soon like there'll be a new version of jane eyre every year <laughs> there already has been you know and it's 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 nothing new but um this one's, I mean, I haven't seen any of the director's previous work, um, Julian Schnabel. I, I checked his um, previous work. I haven't, I'm not familiar with any of it. 
and it was a very interesting movie because I'm a, I mean I'm a huge fan of Willem Dafoe, um, mostly from his it's performance of Green Goblin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if anyone's uh, been following the channel for a long time, you know of my undying love for the Sam Raimi trilogy. So seeing Willem Dafoe in any role is always great. Um, what is worthy to note is, and actually we did a review on this, which was the, um, and I've already forgotten what the movie's called, that Shakespeare movie with Kenneth Branagh. All is true, which all is kept true. calling All is Lost. There, yeah, there we go. Um, the, the title of that movie is lost to me, but uh, All is uh... True, we talked about the, the age difference between the real life Anne Hathaway and Judi Dench, was playing that character, and that's kind of the same with this movie as well. Um, Vincent van Gogh died at the age of 38, and um, let's just say Willem Dafoe is not 38 years old. I think at the time of filming this movie, he was 62. So, I mean, he looks like him. When you see him dressed up in the movie, he looks like Vincent van Gogh. And if you see a picture of him, Vincent did look a lot older than 38 from the pictures. Um, but, you know, that's not taken away from uh, Willem Dafoe's performance. I just thought it was interesting to note that. Um, mm. Now, in all fairness, my review of this movie... I'm not going to center on Willem Dafoe all that much. I thought he was fine in the role. Um, he didn't, you know, astound me. I didn't think it was a phenomenal performance. I didn't think it was one of my favorite Willem Dafoe performances. Um, his accent as well. He has a vague accent and then all of a sudden he drops it and he's just sort of like American Willem Dafoe. Um, that Sounds like Kevin Costner trying to be Robin Hood. Yeah, that also goes for um, Oscar Isaac in the movie as well. The accents are very, just they're not oh, yeah, pinned yeah, yeah. down. They just kind of segue into their normal selves. And it just feels like you're watching Poe Dameron be a painter. Um, so I can't really, I mean, there are some great moments of Vincent van Gogh's, uh, Vincent van Gogh's, I'm sorry, Willem Dafoe's performance <laughs> of Vincent van Gogh in this movie. Um, but to me, that came closer to the end of the film. Um everyone pretty much knows the story of Vincent van Gogh anyway, so it's really difficult to talk about spoilers inherently with this movie. But um, I didn't know Spoiler that- Spoiler alert, a real life person dies. There you go, there you go, <laughs> from um, the 1800s. <laughs> But um, there's, I didn't know Mads Mikkelsen was in this movie and there's an exchange where um, Vincent has to go to sort of like an asylum essentially um, from provoking the crowd and everything like that and riling them up because as we know, the town that he lived in, people kind of shunned him out. He was very much an outcast, very, very lonely person and no one connected to his artwork or him as a person. Um, and he gets put into like a, a mental asylum and Mads Mikkelsen plays a priest who comes by to ascertain whether someone's ready to be put back into civilization essentially to be released and vincent you know he's talking about god he's talking about jesus and because i think he said that originally when he was growing up he came from i think he said his dad was a pastor i think he says in the movie um, so he grew up around that very religious upbringing and there's a very fascinating conversation where mads is looking at one of his paintings that i'm assuming he painted from the um, the mental institute and he says that you say that God made you a painter and he gave you this gift to be a painter. Then why would he make you paint such an ugly painting as this? Like even the priest doesn't get it. No one understands his work. And then as this conversation progresses, um, you know, Vincent starts talking about he feels almost like Jesus on trial and that this priest is Pontius Pilate and you know some people say that Pontius Pilate didn't want to crucify Jesus it was the people it was the masses and there's a lot of parallels there that are drawn to Vincent's actual situation of the people kind of wanting to quote-unquote crucify him and have him driven from the land essentially because he's riling up the people with his very unorthodox um, ideas in terms of his painting for example um, and that was my favorite scene in the movie and I really love that the rest of the movie though is a fairly dull film I'm not gonna lie um, it's not a particularly riveting watch. It moves at a, at a snail's pace. It's below two hours, but it felt long. But um, predominantly what I wanted my review of this movie to be was actually the way it was shot and the direction itself. Um, and it's a double-edged sword with this one. I will say, if you're going to watch this movie on the big screen, watch this with a sick bag in your lap because the entire <laughs> movie is shot handheld. And it moves oh, around no. very frenetically. I think there's very few. I'd have to go back and watch the movie again. In my mind, it was 100% film with handheld, but there may have been some tripod shot. I would assume there would have to be some steady cam shots in there. 
But um, a lot of it is the camera following Vincent as he's walking through landscapes and it's like you're walking beside him and the camera's like this. You know, it's constantly moving. There'll be scenes of like panning around like this and it's constantly... Nobody like walks like this! But um, it's a double-edged sword because I like it in the when you've got Vincent traversing over this landscape and I will talk about the cinematography in a minute because that was beautiful It in terms of vincent's love for nature and wanting to escape to nature and seeing that beauty and seeing i think in the movie he already talks about the picture's already been made you know god is um i think he says like the world is beauty or uh, god is beauty or something can beauty is the world something like that i'm paraphrasing but you really do get that from the landscape so when you are walking beside him you are kind of taking in these landscapes almost like you're walking side by side him and you're seeing what he sees so that is a very effective way of direction of camera work um the use of color as well and sound it all culminates there's moments where the editing of the scene is you'll be following um, almost in a point of view shot vincent van gogh and then it will cut and he'll be still be walking in the same position but in a different location and it does that a lot through the movie there'll be moments where between um scenes between shots there'll be a colored lens that's put over the screen it'll be like a bright yellow lens just suddenly over the frame for an entire scene and that's i'm assuming because he obviously painted with a lot of yellow he liked bright colors such as that um there's moments with blue filters which almost looks like a day for night shot and those are in the scenes where um something's happened and he's very cold he's very isolated so the use of color is fantastic in this movie however there are moments where you just want to grab a hold of the camera and just keep it steady because you are getting so motion sick but again, another positive of that is that because of the unhinged mental state of Vincent, there is this like weird atmosphere to the movie and uncomfortable sense when this camera is very invasive in people's faces or it's moving around a lot. So I don't know. It's it's effective in what it does, but I think that it could still be effective if it was utilized sparingly, like it could still be used. But it didn't need to be used for like 95% of the film is what I guess I'm saying. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of um, little cinematic, what's the word I'm looking for, practices that could have been used sparingly, which I think could have still had a greater effect on the movie. But they are kind of like splurged all over the movie. So I think that might rub some people up the wrong way. Um, but as I said, it is just a fairly, it is a slog of a watch. It's not particularly entertaining. There's very little dialogue in the movie, actually. I will, especially like the first half of the movie, um, which I liked. It's a use of very low key music. It's almost like a solo piano, like occasional string quartet comes in. Um, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to rush back and watch this movie by any stretch of the imagination. As I said, like, I know that Willem Dafoe has been nominated and he was, he was fine in it. Like he was good, but um i didn't i i I, yeah i don't think it was i personally i wouldn't have nominated him for an oscar for this i think that um uh what we're gonna the movie we're gonna talk about in a minute and i've already forgotten his name um the guy um weatherby swan from pirates of the caribbean um yeah um i forgot his name though jonathan something or other the actor he's Um, a swan in pirates of the caribbean Yes, um, I'm going to get the name of the actor now. Because and he's that is also a- in Brazil. He is. Um, give me a second, because that's going to... Uh, Jonathan Price, I thought it was. Um, yes, because um, he was in the Vita as well. When I get onto that review in a minute, I think that he definitely showed a lot more emotional range as him. So I think that he should have been nominated for Best Actor, perhaps over Willem Dafoe. It's a fine performance. You can tell that the director and everyone involved did have a passion to tell this story. It's not completely historically accurate, but they've expressed that, that they wanted to kind of put their own stamp on it, their own interpretation with it, which is absolutely fine. Um, It's just kind of okay. You watch it and then you move on. Uh, Maybe that's just me because I have a lot of movies to watch. So I kind of have that practice with every movie I watch. And it's very rarely that I get to go back to one a second time. Um, But yeah, there's really not much else I can say about this movie. It's, it's the story. I will say though, that the ending, um, there are some theories out there that maybe Vincent didn't um, kill himself. Maybe it wasn't an act of suicide and it would have been an accidental manslaughter or something. And it does go with that theory um, in the film. And I think that um, Loving Vincent also talked about that as well, that it was, that kept it more open-ended though, whereas that absolutely shows you it in this movie. 
But that's really all I can say. And I know we need to keep it brief because um, you've got to take off in half hour and we've got one more movie review to do. So would I recommend this movie? If you're a fan of Vincent van Gogh's art, if you're uh, a fan of seeing films about him as a person, then obviously check it out. Um, if you're a Willem Dafoe fan, um, it's a very different film for what he usually does. So I, I'd say check it out if you're curious to see his performance or you watch many of his other things. If you're a casual moviegoer, though, and you're not following the Oscar movies, um, I wouldn't recommend checking it out. Go and watch Loving Vincent. I think that's a much better movie and much more intriguing. And to me, is a better love letter to Vincent van Gogh in that every single frame of that movie was painted in the style of Vincent van Gogh. So um, go watch Loving Vincent. More people need to see that movie. So mm, I've said everything sure. I can on this. I know you haven't seen the movie. Is there anything you could choose? Nothing for me. I think you've you've done it perfectly. Awesome. <laughs> well, um, thank you for helping me with this one. You're going to help me with one more movie review today and then hopefully two yeah. more tomorrow. I know, I know I was jumping yep. the gun a bit last night when I said we were going to do three today. <laughs> that may have been slightly overambitious. So um, we're going to round off this stream now. Um, so be sure to comment, subscribe, let us know what you thought of this movie. If you have seen it, what did you think of Willem Dafoe's performance? Did you think it was worthy of being nominated? Anything regarding this movie or indeed any of the other films at the Academy Awards, please do let us know. Um, yeah, and we'll see you in five to ten minutes for the next stream. See you guys.